Welcome, everybody, to the Jesus chat line. Um, my name is Stephen Shilton, and I'm here along with my co-host, Richard Burnish. And we're on uh, Montclair Community Access 3, coming to you live for another edition of the Jesus chat line. So before we get to your phone calls, I'd like to call in Richard, and we'll begin with our, um, with our prayer. Dear God, give me courage, for perhaps I lack it more than anything else. I need courage before men against their threats and against their seductions. I need courage to bear unkindness, mockery, contradiction. I need courage to fight against the devil, against tears and troubles, temptations, attractions, darkness and false lights, against tears, depression, and above all, fear. I need your help, dear God. Strengthen me with your love and your grace. Console me with your blessed presence and grant us the courage to persevere until we are with you forever in heaven. Amen. Thank you, Richard. All right. Well, welcome, everybody. It's good to have everybody back for another episode of the Jesus Chat Line. We have our phone lines open for you this evening. As you can see, the number on your screen is 510-355-9879. And we have a couple surprises for you as well as the show goes on. Um, but without further ado, let's get right to your phone calls. And we're going to go right to our first one. And um, Chad has queued up several. Okay. Okay. Uh, welcome to the Jesus chat line. You're our first caller of the evening. Go ahead. Hello? You're live on the program, caller. How are you this evening? Yes, hello? Go ahead, please. Stephen, I was, was, I was wondering, how do I cure my gayness? Uh, well... I think the first, have you tried praying? Have you ever heard of the phrase, pray the gay away? I tried praying, but, he, but men are more attracted to me now. Have you spoken to your local pastor? Yeah, but I think I'm gay for him now, too. Okay, well, I think... What you need to do is, if this is something you're, you're, it's a temptation of Satan is what it is, and you need to fight Satan. Fight him with all your might. You need to fight him with all your might. How do I do that? By praying the gay away. All you need to do, pray every day. And what will happen is Satan will get tired and move on to someone else. And suddenly, you will not have the urge to wear jean cutoffs or make carrot cake any longer. We're going to move on to the next call. You're on the Jesus chat line. I think there's some difficulty with it. Oh, go ahead, caller. Okay, we're going to move on now to to this call. And welcome to the Jesus chat line. Go ahead. Hello? Hi, how are you? Good. Good, how are you? Very well. Do you have a question or a comment for us this evening? Um, I've been having a lot of baseball lately, and I do not know how to get them out of my head. I mean, they're very impure, and I just, I have tried praying, and they just, can't go away. Who, who is in your head? Yep. No, I, I didn't catch the, the first people. part. Gay people. Just a lot of gay guys. Big dicks, big everything. Huh. This is two callers in a row who are afflicted by the gaiety. 
I'm seeing a real trend. Uh, no, Why just, have you given I, in to this gaiety? I really, I, I really, I really need your help. Because all I think of is black dick. It's, it's not good. It's not good. It really is. What are you not dealing you know, if you're calling up this program, you know that gaiety is wrong. Otherwise, you wouldn't be calling asking for help. Really, the answer is right there in front of you. Pray the gay away. Amen. God made Adam and Eve, not Adam and Stephen. <laughs> um, okay, we're going to move on to the next call. I remind you that our... Our phone number is 510-355-9879. And welcome to the program. Go ahead. Oh, hello. This is, uh, oh, God, I'm on. I just wanted to say the Tom Booth is a gigantic faggot. Uh, and Doug Johnson, he's a pretty big faggot, too. All right, bye. <laughs> you know, I'll have you know that I've put up with a lot of adversity in my time. I've battled Satan himself, and if you think that calling up with a prank call is going to daunt us, it's not going to. We've battled Satan, We've battled Satan himself. There were days of trucking many days of trucking where we encountered evil on the road having a glass of old granddad behind before getting off before getting behind the wheel drinking a gentleman jack with a water back and then getting behind the wheel of a big rig and just imagine what happens along the way at some of those truck stops we've battled through that so if you don't think we can battle through a 14-year-old phoning up and saying N, then you're absolutely wrong. Absolutely wrong. And by the way, we're going to uh, mention later on in the show, we have an exciting new offer. It's, it's the Jesus Chatline prayer towel. And um, it's, it's $14.95. And we're going to explain shortly how, how it works and what the benefit is to you. Welcome to the welcome to the show, caller. Go ahead. Uh, hello, sir. Yes. Sir. Hello. You're live on the program. Right there. You're live on the program. All right. Um. Thank you. Thank you for letting me be on your show. I just I was reading the Bible the other day. I understand your problem with family and Satan. I was just reading the Bible the other day, and I. I read something that Jesus said, you know, God, God spoke to me about the gay thing, you know, that I've been having. But uh, he said the only two things we need to follow anymore uh, to be welcomed in the kingdom of heaven is to love our Lord and our God with all of our hearts. Mm -hmm. So, we're in God's words, except from the words of Peter. No, let plan is wrong. Can you lighten this for me? I know. Uh, okay, we're, the, we're having a bit of a bit of an oh, issue. There. Um, perhaps you could turn down your uh, television. Um, okay, well we're going to take our first break of the evening, and when we come back, I think uh, Richard, are you ready to uh, to take some phone calls? Yeah. Huh. Okay, the next voice you hear will be that of Richard Burnish. So stay with us. Thank you. Okay. I'd just like to start with a quick prayer. Thank you, Lord, for all the blessings in my life. Help me to remember them as I face the challenges of infertility. I pray that I can surrender myself into your hands. Let me accept the reality of the situation and have the wisdom and courage to take actions where I can. Strengthen my body, mind, and spirit to endure the trials of infertility. 
Keep me ever mindful of the needs of others and grant us your peace. Amen. I just wanted to say that quick prayer for all of the farmers. So, um, welcome to the Jesus Chat Line. Uh, I'm your host, Richard Burnish. And uh, a big hello to everyone tuning in at home on Montclair Public Access TV3. Um, if this is your first time uh, tuning into our show on Montclair TOS TV3, um, it's a call in show. Um, so the number at the bottom is 510 355 9879. And uh, we're here to provide um, guidance, any kind of answers that you may be searching for, and any other, any other answers that your soul may be searching for. So please call in. And we're going to go right ahead and take this first call. Okay. Hello, caller. You're okay. Send it through chat. Okay. Hello, caller. You're live on the Jesus chat line. Okay. Hello, caller. You're live on the Jesus chat. Hello, caller. You're live on the Jesus. Hello, caller. You're live on. It just keeps ringing. Chat, it just keeps ringing. It just keeps ringing. Hello, caller. Ringing. Okay. It's just it's just ringing. Okay, we're gonna. We'll be right back. Okay. Hello, caller. You're live on the program. Check. Okay. Uh, I will be right back. Chat, it's just ringing over. Okay. Welcome back. Um, we were having a problem with our phone lines, but I believe um, they are now open. So, um, Please call in, and we'll do our best to help. Hello, caller. Welcome uh, to the program. You're live on the Jesus Chat Line of Montclair Public Access TV3. Go ahead, caller. You're live. Okay. I'll just remind... Okay. Hello, caller. You're live on the uh, Jesus chat line on Montclair Public Access. Hello. Hello. Welcome to the show. Hello. This is my first time on the chat, and I'm very nervous and talking. And I like to say, uh, uh, what up, with you? Okay, bye. Thank you. Have a nice day. Okay. <laughs> Well, thank you for for thank you for that call. <laughs> you have a good day too. Um, we take all kinds of calls here, so please, you won't be rejected. Not here. Hello, caller. You're live on Montclair Public Access TV three. Um, hello. I, I've been in committed relationship with my uh, uh, girlfriend for a few years now. Well, that sounds great. Go go. That sounds like a great thing to celebrate. Um, her parents don't really approve it, and they're always talking down to me like, we don't like you because you're a dirty nigger, and your nigger skin makes us hate you. Okay, just, just, okay. Okay. Okay, um, this... Okay, just a reminder to everyone: this is a family, um, a family uh, uh, sh call phone show. Um, so please watch the language. Hello, caller. You're you're live on the Jesus Chat Line on Montclair Public Access TV three. Hello. Hello. Wow, um, not off to a good start with the calls. 
but we'll fight through it. Hello, hello, caller. You're live on the Jesus chat line. Nigger, 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 nigger. Okay. On the air with the chat line among the Republic three. Hi, I just wanted to say hi to Neo, and I've been having um some gay issues. Uh, I'm trying to pray the gay away, but it doesn't work out. How do I do this? Who is um? Okay, well the, the first thing that you're doing correctly is you've identified the problem, and you cannot well, get you Neo's cannot. Neo is my gay lover, and uh. I like niggers. They taste good. The niggers are kind of gross, though. Dominic. Hello? Hello? You're live on the air. Hey Richard, my name's Jamal. Uh, I'm an African American man. I just want to say I'm quite shocked that these people here are calling with such language. Yeah. Well, well, when, when battling, like we're battling, we're, we're, what we're doing here is we're battling against Satan, and we're battling against a lot of definitely down with Satan. So we're gonna catch some of that, but we're just gonna fight through it. I actually have a uh, confession I'm calling about. Okay, go ahead. Well, I was down at uh, my uncle's auto mechanic shop, in which he runs. You know, I help him out sometimes on the weekend. And this lady came in. She had a car. It was a white car. And when it was time to give her the keys, I said, I, I regret this, but I said, here's your white car for a white honky bitch. And they kind of lost it, and I'm out of a job. Well, you know. I, think, I think you know that that wasn't the right thing to say. Yeah. Well, why did you say it then? Well, I mean, I thought it was kind of funny. I mean, she was using the N-word up and down, and I just wanted to return the favor. Chad, it just keeps ringing. Turn off. It's ringing. It's ringing over and over. God came to Richard and Stephen with a dream of a new house of worship, a house devoted to the one true word, the Neon Bible. Thus began their leap of faith. Through the generous donations of our disciples, Richard and Stephen have purchased holy ground where the church of the Neon Bible will stand. Brick by brick, they will venture into erecting the greatest man-made structure that man has ever seen. After visiting the grandest churches in the world for inspiration, Richard has yeah, taken God's dream to a new level.
Welcome. This is the Jesus chat line. We'd like to say hello to the Christian Computing Society. They are watching from their lab tonight. Uh, they like to do a lot of science on computers, and they're inventing lots of things by doing that. Um, and if it wasn't for computers and scientists, we wouldn't be where we're at today, being able to have the, the technology that we have. To, well, the, the show, but other things too. Like, if you go to Future Shop, and they've got, you know, I saw, like, there's a lot of things going on nowadays with um, television, like streaming. It's an exciting time, really. It's exciting. It's an exciting time. And I think we should maybe talk about technology um, tonight and in the future because it really impacts us, not only the way we're entertained, but also the way we worship. Just look at this program. We are worshiping right now. Remember the Lord said that when three or more are present, he is with, with you. Well, there's about 3,000 of us. So what, is, what do you think that means? It means not only is he with us, but he, he has our full attention. Because he has to divide his time. But if there's 3,000 people, do you know what kind of attention he's giving? So what I ask you to do, keeping that in mind, is please... Behave yourselves accordingly. Richard and I were in Future Shop the other day, and they had a game poster. Do you remember, Richard? There was that big, hairy, that being. <laughs> and we were trying to figure out, was that <laughs> part of the actual game, or was that a Future Shop promo? Because it looked so chintzy that we didn't believe a game producer. I mean, look, at there's ads these days with Sam Rockwell. Did you see that, that shooting game? Sam Rockwell was in a, a commercial. <laughs> oh, Richard just told me a joke. Um, but anyways, and they had, oh, okay, we're going to take a phone call from, from uh, a gentleman. Welcome, caller. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, that's we seem to get an issue where it's just ringing and ringing. Uh, I think we can. So yeah, this poster we just we thought it was perhaps just like a placeholder or what would you call it, Richard? Like it's it's a template. Um, okay, we're gonna welcome to the Jesus chat line. Hello. Hi. Thank you for calling. Am I on? Um, yes, you're on. Hey, um, I'm calling because uh, I've had a recently had a crisis of faith. Um, I'm going to school doing medical stuff, and I've seen a lot of deaths recently, and it's been bothering me because I've seen people die, and they haven't had Jesus in their life. What can I do to like bring it to these people's lives? Do you have an opportunity to spend time with them while they're still um, among the living? I mean, I, I felt like I've tried doing that, but, but he was a nigger. <clears throat> well, I don't care what race the person is, sir. Whether they're, and by the way, we don't appreciate that kind of language, okay? It's African-American, or maybe he's from the Car Caribbean, or he could be from... Um, but what if he's a nigger faggot? He took Viagra. I think this is a joke called he Chad. Died. Chad, just... We're going to move on now. You're a nigger faggot. Cock. Um, Chad, did you catch that one before that went on? Okay. Um, okay. Um, we like to have some fun on the Jesus chat line. So here, let's, let's have a little fun right now. Well, this, is, uh, this is Chad. I'm your call screener. Uh, would you please um, let me know what uh, it is you'd, you'd like to speak with about uh, This is Chad, the uh, call screener. Um, what would you like to speak to Stephen about, and then we'll put you on the air. I've just been having a lot of dark thoughts lately. Okay, and what, um, what are these dark kind thoughts of about? Kind of attracted to men. Okay, can you just wait on the line, and you'll be on with um, with Stephen momentarily.
Um, thank you for calling the Jesus chat line. Go ahead, caller. Oh, am I on the air? Yes. Um, do you have a problem that you'd like to speak about? Perhaps you're thinking about men? Actually, I have a few problems, actually, but my biggest problem is uh, I've just been having a lot of urges, attraction towards men, and I guess not even just men, but just like literally just guys. But just, I was in a relationship with a girl for about three years, and then I uh, kind of got in trouble for trying to molest her little brother, but I mean, all that aside, I just can't really stop thinking about men. I just want to be around them. Uh, okay, well, you're the third caller who's called in who likes men. Um, so, you obviously know that it's wrong, otherwise you wouldn't be phoning, correct? Well, obviously. Um, okay, so the first step is that you know it's wrong. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what to do about it, though. I mean, it's... Well, let me ask you, sir. I tried talking to my local pastor about it, but sometimes he's trying to hit on me, so then like, this doesn't work out. <laughs> I, that's absolutely, that. there's no way that could be true. There's well, no, it is. There's, well, he told me, didn't he, Richard? <laughs> um, listen. Can I, talk, can I talk to Richard? I, 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 can I, I'd no, rather talk to Richard. That's you okay. can't. You can't talk to Richard. Can you just put Richard on? No. You're talking to Stephen. Stephen Can Schilton. Can you put Richard on? Did you just hear my response? I said, no, you can't. Richard's taking a break. He's Stop recharging. Stop being a dumb nigger. Put Richard on. That is it. Do you think I volunteer my time to put up with your BS? He hung up. Do you see that, Richard? And you know what? Just for that, here, Richard, would you like to come on the air right now? Look at this. Okay. If you think you're going to rumble my feathers, <clears throat> if you think you're going to ruffle my feathers, it's not going to happen. Hello? Go ahead, caller. Hi, um, I have a problem. I'm Jewish, but um, I was reading the uh, Bible, and in the book of Exodus, um, I found the words of Jesus who said, So stoned, fuck man, aw shit, nigga. Hella motherfucking 666, odd future man. Hello. Bro, check Chad, this out, stop, my swag with the what hole 666, 420. Oh. Welcome to the Jesus chat line. Go ahead. Yeah, that's that's good. I, I I thanks Chad. I do appreciate that. Um, welcome back to the program. Um, oh, welcome. Go ahead, caller. It's time to get back on track. Can you hear me? We're getting lots of hang-ups. Um, go ahead. Welcome to the Jesus chat line. Go ahead. Hello. Yes, go ahead. I just have a question yeah. about marijuana legalization. What are your views on that? Oh, well, um, our views is that it is illegal, and we believe that any drug that's manufactured in a factory should not be taken by, by man or Christians. Marijuana is a plant, though. Oh, it's made in a plant, like a factory. <laughs> Cannabis sativa, medical marijuana. No, I know that um, people have have you. It's I drive by the factory. I drive by the factory. It's called Marijuana Co. Like dot C O. And. There's many people who think that snorting something that is made in a factory is okay, and it's not. We don't even agree with Advil or over-the-counter 
pain relievers. Never mind um, marijuana. So marijuana has made so many people like me convert to Jesus. That's what it took, of all things? Like, perhaps you can explain that. Well, one day I was walking through the forest, and I saw the and the angel said, take this and hit this. And I got so high, I saw God, and he saved me. Are you one of those guys who on, on what's the date that they have that drug thing? Uh, nine, no, no, I almost said 9-11. Oh, is it 4-11 or 5-11? Like or Are you one of those guys who doesn't work and sits around in a circle smoking dope going, look at me, the police aren't busting me, aren't I cool? Are you one of those guys? No. I'm Do you know that the Lord frowns man. upon a man like you? Why are you phoning me about drugs? It's not drugs if it's legal. Marijuana is not legal. Just because Marijuana you saw it in a movie California doesn't nigger. mean it's legal. You saw it in that movie with those two guys where one of them likes Rush. Cheech and Chong. Well, that's a movie. It's not real life. That's real life. I'm going to move on now. That's real life. Let me repeat myself. Nobody's going to rumble my feathers. Nobody. I'm sorry. Nobody. Oh, he's still on the line. But I think you're really helpful. Okay, well, thanks for the call then. Good night. Okay, we're going to... Um, I think that's a good point to uh, maybe take. Well, do you want to get back on here, Richard? We're going to take a commercial break. And we have. Um, it's ringing, Chad. It's ringing, Chad. Uh, we have a video to play later on. So if you stay with us, we're going to play that for you. And we'd like to thank everybody for joining us tonight um, on the Jesus Chat Line. Montclair. Montclair. God came to Richard and Stephen with a dream of a new house of worship, a house devoted to the one true word, the Neon Bible. Thus began their leap of faith. Through the generous donations of our disciples, Richard and Stephen have purchased holy ground where the church of the Neon Bible will stand. Brick by brick, they will venture into erecting the greatest man-made structure that man has ever seen. After visiting the grandest churches in the world for inspiration, Richard has taken God's dream to a new level. Thank you, Lord, for all of the blessings in my life. Help me to remember them as I face the challenges ahead of me. I pray that I can surrender myself into your hands. Let me accept the reality of this situation and have the wisdom and courage to take action where I am. Strengthen my body. Make my body ready and make my spirit ready to endure the trials before me. Keep me ever mindful of the needs of others and grant us your peace. Amen. Now in the commercial break you saw you saw an interview where we took it to the streets asking people on the streets who are 
Richard Burnish, and Stephen Chilton. And some of those answers, you know, they seem really caring. Well, they are very caring. They don't drink. They don't smoke. We don't. And we do have rules against things that we can and cannot drink, like carbonated drinks. And if you want to know more about this, stay on the line and watch the show a little more. Or go to JesusChatline.com and follow us on Facebook to learn more about our Bible, the Neon Bible. But enough about that. We're here to help, so we're going to open up those lines. Hello, caller. You're live on the Jesus Chat line on Montclair Public Access TV 3. Yeah, um, I'm a little curious about the Neon Bible okay. and why it's important to carbonated drinks and stuff like that. Seriously. Okay, well, you see, the Bible was written a long, a long time ago. King James Bible was written a long time ago, and and it, you know what? It just doesn't speak to today's world. It doesn't speak to a lot of the problems facing today's youth and today's people. Things like carbonated drinks, things like illegally uh, downloading movies and downloading music, and 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 you know, uh, virtual web camera phone sex. And all of these other types of things out that are that are out there now, and I'm not talking about the future, sir. Like this is happening now. So we did what needed to be done, and we updated the Bible. We updated it for everyone living in, you know, 2012. Okay, um, I'm I'm shocked. I feel personally insulted, almost as a Christian. Um, how can you update something that the religion is based on? Well, I think it was a good starting point. You know, it was a good it was a good place to start, and and the world that that was around the Bible at the, the time it was it was created, it probably was enough. It probably was enough to cover the problems that man faced. But now, I don't feel it has. I feel the problems are now bigger than the Bible is. Okay. Well, here's that age-old question. Who are you to say that? Hi, my name is Richard Burnish. Right. No, I know who you are. Oh, okay. You're pretty. Don't get me wrong. But oh, I don't okay. understand what gives you the right to change the Bible. I understand. Well, what gave Jesus the right to write, you know, to, to write the Bible? Really, what gave him the right? You know, he was just a man, just like Jesus I'm just a man. Jesus was the son of God. Are you the son of God? Well, I think, you know, who, it's too, you know what? I, I don't know. I really, you know, I don't know. And I don't think anyone knows that yet. My story hasn't been told. So you think that you are um, higher than Jesus? That will give you the right to change? Well, I'm taking his dreams and bringing them to the next level. Someone has to. You know, because the world isn't a, a very good place right now, and I think you would agree with me. I agree. It, it needs modern. It thing. needs to be modern. Like Everything what? What are you? What is your? Bible what is? What is your? Still, opinion? Sorry, go ahead. My my point is, I understand what you're doing. You're you're trying, but the problem is, you're touching something that really shouldn't be touched. And I think that's why you're getting a lot of the phone calls you're getting. Because you're threatening people who've had the same beliefs for literally ever. Well, 
what how do you how do you think this should be fixed how what 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 do you feel should be done there's nothing wrong with the bible well the, the thing, thing uh, yeah but the cool. thing to remember that the bible was written wasn't written in english there could have been you know it was translated into english so there could have been all kinds of things that were left out and that's what we want to put back in like, but thank you for your call you know that's that's that, that's a very good question are we doing enough i say no hello call you're live on the program uh hello my name little jimmy Hello, call. You're you're live on the Jesus chat line. Hello. Hello. Welcome to the show. Go ahead. Is is this Richard Burnish? Yes, this is Richard Burnish on the Jesus chat line. Yes. This is Priest Hans Peter Schwanzlutscher. Oh, hello. I am working for the media department of the Vatican, under direct order of the Pope Benedict the 16th and i've been informed about your program okay go ahead uh what's up chad the lines are crossed crossed hold on hold on the lines are crossed i've been told about your neon bible uh. okay there we go okay sorry go ahead caller you have a few questions about the neon bible yes indeed i do okay i would love to know what exactly it is about Okay, um, well, to paraphrase, I mean, it's just a, a reinventing of the Bible. It's, it's, it's bringing the, the Bible up to modern day. It's speaking, it's, it's, it's giving the answers for questions like, should I be using torrents? You know, should I update Firefox? You know, things like that. Okay. Well, you know, as a member of the Vatican and of the media department of the Vatican, uh, I don't know if anyone has the right to rewrite the Bible. Chad, it's sorry. Did you break? What was that caller? You don't think that anyone has the right to rewrite the Bible? Is that what you're saying? Yes, exactly. This is what I'm saying. Well, that's simply not true. That's just that's like that's just quitting. That's just giving up. I assume that I'm quite confused about your technology. You're using that to Jesus chat line. Like, am I still talking to this chat person or am I actually talking to Richard Burnish? This is, uh, sorry, you're, I'm detecting an accent. Are you, are you Irish? No, I actually happen to be German. I used okay. to work with the Pope before he went to the Vatican. Okay. So I still know him back this, from Germany. This is, this is Richard, yes, you're speaking with Richard. Oh, I am speaking with Richard Burnish. Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. Are you actually a priest, Herr Burnish? Yes. Could you please answer me directly? I want answers immediately. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, okay. Yes, I'm a priest. That's correct. Yes. Do you have some diploma that could prove that? Yes. Yes. Where, where is it? Also, I have to admit, I'm kind of worried about your necklace around your neck. Shouldn't that be a cross? It is. It actually is a cross, yes. Could you please show to the camera because I do not believe you, good sir. It's a cross, yeah. I can't see it because there is your Photoshop graphic in front of the way. I know about this technology because I'm working for the media department. So it's a, it's a cross. Well, so, yes, this is a family show, I believe. So could you please stop showing so much skin? As this is explicit. Please okay. hide this. All right. All right. Okay. So let's just get to your question. What was your yes, question? Yes, please. Let's get to the question. Could you please give me a little bit of information about your Neon Bible because I've been informed about it. So this is why I'm calling in. I've, it's the modernizing of the King James Bible. It's it, like the, the Bible doesn't address things like sleep, sleeping with your neighbor's wife. Thou shall not. Thou shall not plow your neighbor's wife and things like that. It doesn't say that in the Bible and people need to hear it. People, the, the, you know what, they can't just interpret anymore. People don't have well, time for interpretation. They need to be told what to do. 
Well, I've got a message for you. I think I've got three words that describe you pretty well. You're a swindler, a phony, and a trickster. That's You're just no, trying to no, get money that's out of that's people. Not true. This is something we, the Catholic Church, no. do not do. Stop. That isn't true at all. Like, we are selling the Bible at twenty nine ninety five. We are selling it. Yeah, and this is exactly what you're doing wrong. You just want to get the money off people. And this is something the Catholic Church it's not, it's not, condemns. It's, some of it's credit cards too. It's everything. We're not, just, no. we're not just taking... It's not money. Like you could order through PayPal. Well, I've been told you try to build up something called the Church of the Neon Bible. And we won't call this a church. You can't just go around and make up your own church. This is actually called a sect like Scientology. Yes, you can. You could. Why can't you start up a church? Anyone like we're, we have the paperwork. It's all been processed. No, we, and we how dare you land. call yourself a Christian? How dare you, sir? Who are you to to, to challenge me? Like I am. Well, I'm working for the Pope. I'm under direct order of Pope Benedict the Sixteenth. This gives me all right to judge you, my friend. Okay, well that's your opinion. Yes, it is. You know, okay, well, thanks for that. Okay, we're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Inspiration. Let Richard Burnish show you the way. Host of Jesus Chatline and author of the Neon Bible, Richard's goal is to rid the internet of filth. Life wasn't always easy for Richard, but through the power of our Lord, he was able to overcome the temptations of evil. Let Richard show you God's road to redemption and change your life forever. Richard Burnish, he influenced my life in a lot of ways, you know made me who I am today. The path to redemption, yes. Richard Burnish has changed my life for the positive. I like his style. It's, it's influential. For stories, inspiration, song, and your phone calls, join us on our crusade. Richard Burnish. He is our Savior. He is the Son of God. He is the author of our salvation. He beckons, follow me. He instructs, go and do thou likewise. He pleads, keep my commandments. Okay, welcome back to the program. Um, I just want to let our viewers know that um, we have traced that last call, and that caller was not from Germany. Um, so whoever that was posing as someone who has connections to the Pope, that is absolutely false, as we suspected. And we just wanted to let everybody know that. And we, we, Richard stands by everything he just said as far as the Neon Bible goes, and I stand by it too. And I hope that all of you do as well. Anybody is entitled to start their own church. This is a free country, and if somebody wants to legally start a church, then they can do it, and that is what we have done. And I'll tell you is that we have a direct pipeline to God. God speaks directly to Richard. 
And so, our, therefore, our religion, we, we don't just believe, we know that our religion is the most purest manifestation of God's will that there is. And we will stand by that, and we have every right, probably more right than any religion, to conduct our business and our beliefs. Now, before we go on, I would just like to read a prayer. And this is a prayer for the farmers, because there's been some farmers who have been having a rough go of it this crop season, growing the different crops that they have. Farmers work hard. They have to drive old, beat-up vehicles because they can't afford new ones. And they work hard plowing their fields. And so this is the prayer for the farmers. Thank you, Lord, for all the blessings in the farmers' lives. Help them to remember that as they face the challenges of infertility. I pray I can surrender myself into your hands. Let me accept the reality of this situation and have the wisdom and courage to take action where I can. Strengthen my body, mind, and spirit to endure the trials of infertility. Keep me ever mindful of the needs of others and grant us your peace. Amen. Okay, so there we go. And now we're going to return back to the, f to the phone lines. We have a lot of callers. Um, welcome to the show, caller. Can you hear me on the Jesus chat line? Yes, I can. And I would like to talk to Stephen Shielton. Oh, this is. Go ahead, caller. Now, is this? Did you did you just perhaps call us? Yes, I did. Okay. Well, we we happen to know for a fact you're not from Germany. Well, I am. Carry so on. So, could could I please talk to Stephen? This is Stephen Chilton. Oh, is it? Yes. Okay. Well, first of all, I would like to tell you that I'm quite insulted by the things you are saying because I am German. I'm not from Germany, like I've told you, and if you would listen, I'm from the Vatican. This is where I'm located right now. I used to be from Bavaria, where I was with the Pope, and now I'm at the Vatican. So, please take that back, young sir. It is quite rude and unfriendly that you are just making assumptions. Well, anybody okay. can call and make yes. any kind of like you're. I'm noticing, sir, your icon. You, you claim to have worked with the Pope, but yet your icon is Pink Floyd. No, that is not correct, good sir. I do not even know what you're talking about. I'm using your landline, so I don't know what icons you see. It's three this makes triangles. me believe that you are under the under drugs, which makes me worry. Drugs are not a solution, Herr could you, Stephen Schilton. Could you please speak a phrase? Could you say, what is fresh air in German? Frische Luft. Okay, he might be German, Richard. Schweinehund. Okay. It is, German is the language, mein Leben. the language of romance. Yes, indeed it is. It's a, just listen to the beautiful words we have in German. Like you say, butterfly, we say Schmetterling. Mm -hmm. This is just the beauty of the German language. Do you like Rammstein? Well... I have to admit I'm aware of the band called Rammstein, but okay. I do not know if I agree with the things they are saying. The good thing about Rammstein is that they bring attention to the beautiful language that is German. But otherwise I completely condemn this loud rock and roll hip hop music. Yes. The only good music is church music. Wouldn't you agree, Herr Steven Schilton? I do believe that church music is, is it's the it's best, bro. I have to admit, looking at your face, I would say that you used to sing in a choir. Didn't you used to be a choir well, boy? Well, no, not always. I actually used to drive truck. Um, oh, and, and so I actually saw that your face kind of gives it away. Because I, some of the some of the bands I used to listen to went while driving truck were one band was called Clutch. Uh, another band was called Motorhead. Um, these were the types of bands that truckers listened to, but I no longer listen to that anymore. Okay. I, I was just looking at you with a microphone, and I thought you could make a pretty good singer. Well, thank you very much. 
Thank you very of much. Of all, you're quite a handsome man, if I might say this. Okay. As well, a question. Well, thank Anyways, you very much. Listen, I'm gonna, the reason I'm why I'm calling, okay. this is the important, let's get to the points and let's get to the facts. The problem with you people located in the United States of America is that you think you can do everything with the genuine chocolate man president. Uh, the thing is that you think you can make up your own religions, which is completely against what we as Catholics preach. And there's only one person who has got a direct connection to God, and that is the Pope himself. There's no one else. Please, let me make one thing perfectly clear. You keep stating that you worked with the Pope. I will tell you that we do not recognize the Pope. There is no Pope in our religion. Everybody is the Pope in our religion. Yes, and that is exactly the problem. This is why Muslims will go to hell. This is why all the Jews will go to hell. There's only one religion, and this is the Catholic Church under the direct order of Pope Benedict the Sixteenth. And every Christian, if you call yourself a Christian, you should agree with this. Or you're not a Christian, you're just a swindler, a phony, and a trickster. Sir, you might as well be talking about eggs, Benedict. Now, I, have gonna, to, I do not know what you're talking about. I'm going to move on. I thank you for your call. We've given you a couple chances now. Um, we appreciate your input, but I have to disagree with most of what you said. We don't recognize the Pope. We never have. We, we never will. We will. I, di I didn't even know that, that the Pope's name was Benedict until you just said that. Uh, we couldn't. If you showed us a picture of, of Benedict, um, a uh, we wouldn't even know who that is. Would you know, Richard? Okay, we're going to accept this call. Go ahead and welcome to the Jesus chat line. Hello? Yes, you're you're live on the on the air. Go ahead. Oh, um, hi. Am I talking to Stephen right now? You are. Um. Oh, hi. How you doing? How you doing? Very good. You're not a farmer by chance, are you? Um. No. No. I'm not a farmer. I'm from uh, New York. Uh, okay. Far from being a farmer, actually. Okay. Well, we would like to hear from the farmers out there. But go ahead, sir. From New York, you you go right ahead. Well. Well, I have a I have a couple of questions about what you were just saying. Okay. Um. Well, you 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 said that you guys have more right than any other religion out there, right? Well, I don't know. That's perhaps a strong statement, but but certainly we have every right as any other religion because it's legal. We have filed the paperwork. We are recognized as a legal religion, and we have a right in this country. To to um, to practice our faith just like any other religion, and we're not doing anything to harm anyone. We're not hurting anybody. We're yes, we accept money, but you know, we we have to we yes, have yes, to continue I, I on. Agree. I agree with that. Okay. But, um, I I agree with that, and I and I hold empathy towards all the other callers with all their belligerent and their pugnacious words towards you and your. And your uh, endeavor in trying to do what you're trying to do here, it's, it's a good thing. But I, I have a couple of other questions. Okay. This, ne this neon Bible you speak of, is that the only way to get to heaven? Yes, it is. The neon Bible is only twenty nine ninety five, and so, if you so you're saying the neon Bible is the only way to get to heaven? Yes, if you ask me who is a member of the Church of the Neon Bible, and you're asking me, how do you get to heaven? Now, if you asked that Pope, or if you asked somebody from another religion, they'd obviously give you a different answer. But if you're asking you, my... Uh, Go ahead. Are you familiar with the indulgences being sold by during France and their... Uh, well, during like the French Revolution and before that and the Catholic Reformation and all of that. They sold indulgences claiming that the only way to get to heaven is to buy these indulgences. And, uh, you know, Luther, he found that, you know, against the Catholic religion. And so he well, we came up with the We don't want to bring thesis. politics into this now. This, I, I don't know is, what Martin um, Luther King has to do with any of this. It, it's, um, you see, it, it's not Martin Luther King, sir. It's Martin Luther from France during the, 
I'm not familiar with the dates, but it's Martin Luther from France who's active with the Catholic Church, not at this moment, but back, you know, back then. It's, I'm, de okay, I'll take your word for it. To me, Martin Luther doesn't sound like a very French name, um, but I guess there's all kinds of names in other countries. Like here, for example, there's many names. Um, I can't pronounce Richard's neighbor's name. They roasted a goat, though, and there are waving airline tickets in the air. But go ahead. Um, by any chance, Matt, am I uh, lucky enough to speak with Richard? No. No? Oh, okay. Go that's, on. That's fine. Um, so how do, you guys, how do you guys deal with all these prank callers and... We do have the right to our church and to our Bible. Our Bible speaks to the modern times. There is nothing in the Bible, for example, about torrents. The language about having relations with your neighbor is, is a little hard to figure out in the regular Bible. That's why the language has been changed to something more modern. We believe that for twenty nine ninety five, you will purchase our Bible. We have to... We have to um, the money to print the Bible has to come from somewhere or there would be no neon Bible. So is, is, this, is this Bible uh, lucrative? It's enough to keep us going. Well, well I congratulate you for that. Because um, you do need to make a profit at the end of the day. But um, I have a couple of other questions about your uh, neon Bible. Uh, yes, because I mean... Listen, if, if we're going to do this at no cost, if, if we're sitting there in the evening and, and we're, Richard and I are a couple of sand... Chad. Chad. No, I... Oh, sorry. Um, if, if Richard and I were a couple of sandwich artists, how could we... It wouldn't serve our, our congregation very well, would it? And we're here 24-7 for our people. I'll rubber you do it. And we're going to, we thank you for your time. We've given you ample time now to voice your opinion. Um. And, and we're going to go to this call right here. Go ahead, caller. You're, you're on the air. Hey, Stephen, what's up? Oh, uh, not this much. This is Shauna from the deputy, uh, deputy Durbin's office. I'm. Hello, yes. This is Stephen Shilton. Our lines got crossed again. I don't know which one is active. Can, speak, sir, if you could. Hello. Yes. Hello. Okay. Yes, this is uh, Deputy Durbin from the Montclair Sheriff's Department. I called back a few episodes ago. You guys are saying you're monitoring IP addresses. Yes. Sir, this is illegal. You cannot do this. We have SWAT teams posted up outside of your church right now. We're ready to enter. I don't believe that that's real. We can monitor anything we want. If something is incoming no, into sir, our this system... this is a violation of public privacy. You're not allowed to do this. We have a right to detect anything that's incoming. Anything. Go ahead, caller. Um... Hello. Is this Stephen? Yes, it is Stephen. Welcome to the Jesus chat line. Hello, my comrade. Um, I just wanted to tell you that you left your dildo at my house yesterday, and I was wondering if you wanted to come get it. You know what? I'm not, I was about to hang up on you, and I, but I want to say this directly to your face. You will not rumble my feathers. I did not know the humans had feathers. This is new to my, to my intelligence. That is the worst accent I think I've ever heard on this program. Excuse me, sir. I am offended by what you are saying. Yeah, I'm going to rumble your feathers and see how you like it. I'm sorry, I am a human. I do not have feathers. Are you wearing a tracksuit? A tracksuit. Do you listen to Beatles records? Actually, no, I do not. I hate all American you. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna move on. 
Let's bring, yeah, that's a good point. Thank you, Richard. We want to we want to discuss technology. Excuse me, I'm still on oh, the line. Still. I hope you know. <laughs> well, speaking of technology, it looks like technology has failed us just now. Would you like to continue on, caller? Um, yes, actually, I would. Um, I recently have come to America, and I would like to know about your religion that you call Christianity. I hear that you need a neon Bible to get into this heaven that you speak of. It's not an absolute requirement, but uh, it helps. Lady, really? I was just watching your show, and you said that you need it to get to heaven. Twenty-nine ninety-five. If you order it, it doesn't even matter if if it actually ships. Just the act of ordering it, that act of faith, is enough. You just go to your shopping cart and complete the transaction, and that act of faith. Now, don't get me wrong. Reading the Neon Bible will be very helpful towards furthering your closeness to to God, but. That first step of showing the faith in the Neon Bible is tremendous. Is it, is it also is it also required to have feathers to get into heaven? Because you are saying that I am ruffling your feathers, and humans do not have feathers, to my opinion. Is America working on something like that? Sir, it's a figure of speech. Russia? We have a figure of speech here in this country. Where if your feathers are rumbled, it means you're you're getting to somebody. It means that you've put them off their game, and and believe me, that is not happening tonight. I am standing up to this. But I'm you're sitting down right like now. I, I'm looking at you right now. You're sitting down. Again, we are talking about a figure of speech. But go on. Do you. I'm saying that you're sitting down. Please go on well, with your what point. What are you telling me? Please go on with your point. My point is that you left your dildo at my house and you need to come get it. Unless you want me to keep it, then I will use it. But We have never had anything like Chernobyl in this country. And do you think there's a, perhaps a reason for that? Maybe it's the way we conduct ourselves. Do we have a caller on the line? Hello? Oh, yes, go ahead. I'm sorry, you're a bit. Um, so you're saying that it's twenty nine ninety five? Yes. All right. So is that the only way you can get into heaven? Well, sir, if somebody lent you a neon Bible and you read it and you practiced it, then I'm not going to lie and say that that's not good enough to get into heaven. All I'm saying is that the act of supporting this ministry to show that faith in it and to allow us to further the ministry so that other people may be saved, it's, it's quite an important thing to actually pay for it. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? Yes, but... What if nobody? What if somebody wants to learn about the Neon Bible but does not have the money, and lives too far away to borrow it? Well, sir, I hear excuses from people on a daily basis that I don't have the money to feed my kids, and I, but then they go and buy a pack of cigarettes, or they go and they bought a, buy a bottle of buy, buy a bottle of old Granddad. I think anybody can find it within themselves to come up with twenty nine ninety five. I mean, we're talking about a very small price to pay. When you're talking about eternity. And, and listen, we don't even care how you come up with that money when it comes down to it. The important thing is that you do. <clears throat> so, you don't care how I come across the money, as long as I buy the Bible. We're not going to ask questions, sir. Do, do you have a, do, is there something you, would, do you have a point or a comment? I'm just curious if, uh, so you think that anybody can get money. So basically, if they can't buy the Bible and can't attain it, they don't get into your heaven. Correct. I hope, sir, you didn't ride in on a high horse here. This is the Jesus chat line. The, 
the official television yes, program guys, of the Neon Bible. We have this program for like-minded people, not for someone to ride in on a white horse. Yes, you guys said that you. This is the Jesus chat line. But earlier, you guys said that you. What gave Jesus the right? You questioned God the Son. No, I think what Richard is saying. Somebody said, "What gave Richard the right to rewrite the Bible?" And all Richard says, yes, and he, "What his gave Jesus the right?" But he, of course, Jesus he had the right. the right. He had the right. But what he's saying is that if Jesus, Jesus had the right, right Richard has the right. Son. Did you say something about drums? No. Jesus had the right because he was God's son. Richard has the right to modernize the Bible. Anybody does, quite frankly, but nobody's going to follow it. People follow Richard's version of the Bible, and there's a reason why. Because he has a pipeline to God. He has done this responsibly. He has not done it for personal gain. He has done it for the greater good of today's society. And if you would read it, you would then see... Then why do you sell the Bible? Because, why sir, do you, Why do you charge money? Are you why familiar? don't you do it the way that everybody... Every well, other sir, church uses apartheid. What I'd like you to do is go to your local printer and say, Hi, I have a 400-page document. I'd like to have printed hardcover. Would you do that for free, please? And I'd like 10,000 yes. of them. Did you ever go to college? You see what kind of response you get from the printer. It, oh, yes, sir. Oh, get on it. Uh, let me put my paying jobs aside and get to work on your, ten, on your 10,000 free Bibles. Yes, sir. Think about what you just said, damn it. That is why we need money. That is why we need money. That is why we need the money, and you will not rustle my jimmies. That is why, that is why we need the money. You said rustle my jimmies. No, Where'd I you hear said, that from? I said you will not rumble my feathers is what I said. You said rustle my jimmies. No, I did not. You did. You're trying to get away from the point. Do you see? We need money uh, because it costs money to you print need money. Bibles. Yes, every other church in the country uses offerings. Well, and that's what we're doing. No, you're you're doing it backwards. You want if you want people to join a religion and find out, you give them the Bible free and take them to church. Why should we take up a collection, and then? Use all that money to pay for that service. Why don't we just charge the people who want the Bible? So then only the people who get the Bible, are they're the ones paying for the service instead of perhaps somebody, a member of our church doesn't want their money to go to the Neon Bible. They want it to go into our funds. There's a PDF. Tell them. There's a PDF, yes. There is a PDF of it. So what if I found a torrent of your Bible? Well, we can't stop it. Then would they get into your heaven for reading it that way? We believe it's a, it's a user fee based thing. That's the most fairest of all. If somebody wants a Bible, they pay for the Bible. If you want to watch a movie, you purchase Netflix. You can watch Jericho on Netflix. You can watch, um, there's all kinds of things. That's not what I was asking. If I read a torrented version of your Bible, I get into your heaven. There's a part in the Bible that is against torrents. So, no. So, there's a part in the Bible that's against Listen, torrents. Listen, sir, it says in the Bible, thou shall not kill. If I see a guy walking down the street with a Bible and I murder him so that I can get my hands on that Bible to read it, do you think that's going to get me into heaven? Yes, God does not care. As soon as you accept Jesus into your eyes and your heart, all past sins are forgiven. So what you're saying is it's okay to behave any way you want. I can go walk down the street. I can kill someone. I can, I can smoke cocaine all every day of my life. But then all I have to say is, oh, I'm sorry, Lord. I shouldn't have smoked that cocaine. I shouldn't have downloaded that torrent. Have you ever sinned? Bef well... There was a time where I was not involved with this religion when I was a trucker. All right, so you said that. Well. So do you think God has forgiven you for what you've done then? Yes. 
So what is the difference from exactly, oh, I'm sorry I smoked that cocaine. Did you just say to God, oh, I'm sorry I did those things when I was a trucker? The difference, sir, is that we wrote a Bible. The difference is that you wrote the Bible? We wrote a Bible. What, so if I wrote a Bible, God would forgive me? No, because it wouldn't be a good that Bible. That is what you were saying. Your Bible would not be a good Bible. It would not speak of today's issues. I would speak the future's issue. Give me an example of how you would alter the commandments if you wrote a Bible. You already altered the commandments. Earlier yes. Richard said that in the, in the old Bible, it did not say that you could not have sex with your neighbor's wife. That is the seventh commandment. No, he said he changed it to modern verbiage so that now it reads, Thou shall not plow thy neighbor's wife. Yes. Do you know what it says in the Bible? Do you know what the seventh commandment is? Yes. What is it? It is, Thou shall not plow thy neighbor's wife. That is the seventh no, commandment. Is not. In the, well, the you seventh said commandment the, is, Thou shall not commit adultery. Not in our Bible, it's not. That is the seventh commandment in your Bible? What needed to be updated about that? What needed to be up the, updated about the seventh commandment the in language. the Bible? We're speaking to today's youth and to today's society. So you're making it so where they can be illiterate and not wor no word like adultery. Sir, there's a lot of people who watch things like the Chappelle Show, and there's a lot of language people have Chappelle in their heads now. Chappelle Show's been canceled for years. It is still ongoing. How often do you watch it? We're getting nowhere with this caller. Uh, we're going to be right back. Richard has um, an exciting new um, thing to speak about. Um, and I think you're all going to um, want to wanna see this. So when we come back, uh, Richard will get into that. Thank you, Lord, for all the blessings in my life. Help me to remember them as I face the challenges of infertility. I pray that I can surrender myself into your hands. Let me accept the reality of the situation and have the wisdom and courage to take action where I can. Strengthen my, bi strengthen my, my body, mind, and spirit to endure the trials of infertility. Keep me ever mindful of the needs of others and grant us your peace. Amen. It's a little prayer we've been saying tonight for the, f for the farmers. So, to everybody watching at home on Montclair Public Access TOV3, uh, TV3, um, this is the Jesus Chat Line. It's a call-in show. And please call in on the bottom, 1-510-355-9879. And remember to turn down your television set when doing so, because otherwise there will, there's some feedback. Um... But before we get to our next call, I'd like to take a quick moment to um, let everybody see a new prototype of our new prayer towel. Now, this isn't the exact one. It's just a prototype that has, that has been blessed uh, by myself. And what it is 
is it goes atop of your monitor. It goes on top of your monitor like this. And what that helps to do is that amplifies the prayer that's coming through the technology that is the internet. We've designed it in such a way that it works with the technology and with, with it, with the prayer towel on top of your television set, you simply place your hands upon it like this. be blessed. This is a new idea. This hasn't been done before. And it's going to be available on JesusChatline.com for 1995. The Jesus Chatline prayer towel. It will be available very soon. We're going to go ahead and take a call. Hello, caller. What do you think about the prayer towel? Will you be purchasing one? Um, I might. I'm curious as to uh, what your commandments are. Our commandments in the Neon Bible? Yeah. Well, they're, they address many things. They address, um, you know, uh, uh, plowing thy neighbor's wife. They address uh, um, uh, illegal downloading, torrenting, texting in movie theaters, um, digital uh, digital piracy, and, and uh, there's uh, there's really there's 17 of them. So I don't really have enough time to go through all of them, but those are kind of the summary of them. So, um, but if you go to JesusChatline.com. Um, you could find out more and order yours. Hello, caller. You're live on the program. Hello? Hello, you're live on the program. How are you? I'm doing very well. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you? Are we discuss about the prayer towel? Yeah, okay, yes. 1995. Yes, um, also, I want to talk about how, how Christian. Sorry, you Hello? want to talk? Yeah, I'm here. Go ahead. Why, well, hello there, Richard. How are you? Okay, this is one of those sound boards. Um, I should discuss to you about. <sighs> okay. We're just going to. Okay. It's a prank. Hello, you're live on the air. Yes, you've been asking for a farmer all night. I am answering your prayer. Oh, you're a farmer. We got a delay. Yes, sir, up in Isla. Well, that's great. We've been saying prayers for, for you all evening and all of the other farmers that deal with infertility and all of the other it's, things that can you know, happen bad. to the land. My main crops, potatoes, and it's been a rough year. Well, you have our support. We've been praying for you all night. It, what kind of farming do you do? It, it's, it's all potatoes. I spend my day counting potatoes, just like one, two, three, all the way to potato. We're trying to do a serious show here. We're trying to take calls. We're trying to help people out, and we get these joke calls over and over, and I'm sick of it. I've had enough of it. If you do not like the show, then watch another show. You don't change the channel. But please, do not ruin it for other people. Do the Christian thing, and think about what will my actions do to someone else. Be mindful of others. Because if this is the kind of stuff that we're going to be getting, we're just going to shut this down. 
and then there'll be no show for anyone. Okay. So this is the last chance that I'm taking. Hello, Collie, you're live on the air. Hello? Okay. Hello, you're live on the program. Hello, you're live on the program. This call is provided by fiphone.org. Hello? I don't know what that Hello? was. Hello? Hello? 